Oh, good morning, and our leadership series continues, and this morning we're in Memphis, Tennessee, on the Coast Guard Cutter Kankakee, uh, but also visiting with Sector Lower Mississippi River, and we talk about our leadership principles, we talk about knowing your purpose, standards matter, we empower our people, and taking decisive action. Uh, but today I'm joined by Chief Warrant Officer John Price, uh, assigned to Sector Lower Mississippi River. So, so John, welcome to the series. Uh, when I read through John's bio, uh, he's been to uh, over 25 different schools in his Coast Guard career. Uh, he has over 20 various qualifications, both in the afloat community, in the marine safety world, at our stations, at MSSTs. Uh, and so out of all of that, when we talk about knowing your purpose, uh, what does knowing your purpose is, as a leader mean to you, John? Well, Admiral, I think uh, knowing your purpose it connects and ties you to your responsibilities as, as a leader. For instance, when I was a junior in my career, I was an MK2 just reporting aboard the Cutter Point Countess. Uh, it was a little bit overwhelming and the chief met me and he took me all around the ship and said, this is your engine room, this is your boat, uh, this is your responsibility to make it run and keep it clean and if you mess it up, I'm gonna take it away from you. So I knew right then that that was my purpose So and I ran with that from then on. Um, so it's, an, it's important to know that when you're given a great responsibility like that and you really take it seriously, that it can really help you be a better leader, a great leader. And while John was preparing for this video shoot, by the way, it's great Coast Guard weather out here today. Uh, we wouldn't have it any other way, but flood conditions here in Memphis, Tennessee. But I asked his co-workers and I said, so, so give me the dirt on Chief Warrant Officer John Price. And the truth of the matter is that there, there wasn't any. Uh, and in fact, they said he, he's a great leader. So we talk about knowing your purpose. And if you have somebody new to this unit um, and they show up in Memphis, Tennessee, maybe they're new to the Coast Guard. And they think of the Coast Guard as interdicting drugs mm -hmm. uh, or maybe out in the Bering Sea. And now they find themselves at Sector Lower Mississippi River. How do you connect with that person? How do you, you know, inspire them to know their purpose on the inland rivers here. Right, well as you mentioned Admiral, well, it's, it's a, on the Mississippi River, it's a completely different animal as far as what we do around the rest of the Coast Guard. Uh, and quite frequently I'm asked here in Memphis when I'm going around, uh, there's Coast Guard in Memphis? Um, what do you got, what for? Well, it's the Mississippi River. So uh, just a little brief background about what we do at the sector, we're spread out over 2,200 uh, river miles mm -hmm. across six states. So when that junior member gets here, there's a lot for them to, to take in. But because we're so vast, there and we're on one of the cutters right now, there are six inland te tenders here in on the Mississippi, which obviously do all of the aids to navigation for the commerce that travels up and down the river. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there are three separate MSD units along the different states here in, on the Mississippi, which do the marine inspection side of, the, of what the Coast Guard does. Um, as a marine inspector here, uh, I do all the in inspections on the ships and the boats that travel up and down the river that this river through in a given year does about $60 million, billion dollars of commerce wow. in a year. So it's a 24-7, 365 days a year operation. and so. When you get somebody new and you can connect them to the communities that we serve and the industries that we serve to keep the river open and the commerce flowing, it really connects you with, as a person, to your surroundings. Yeah. Well, what a, great, what a great way to connect mm -hmm. uh, the commerce, our economic security, but it all goes down the river. That's right. Uh, as does most of our maritime commerce comes through our inland river system. So, Appreciate you standing the watch, but more importantly, safeguarding this mm -hmm. vital waterway for us as Thank well. You. Uh, if, if you were to think back over your more than 24 years of experience, uh, all the way up through senior chief and, and now as, as a you know, W3, mm -hmm. and you continue to move on, uh, as you look back in your journey as a leader, um, is there any stop along the way in, in your leadership experience, a story? or a vignette that stands out in your mind in terms of what it means to be a leader? Uh, certainly. I remember when I was the senior chief at the MSST in Anchorage, and we had 
70 plus enlisted guys that were as mm -hmm. part of that unit. And I, one of my jobs as the senior chief was to review all of the evals for the uh, enlisted folks. And so we had a BM1 who was a good performer, he had good marks, but he just wasn't ready to be a chief. Right. And so it's a hard decision to make, not always the most popular decision, but he was marked not recommended for advancement. Um, so it's not always easy to be a leader, but sometimes you just have to make those decisions. Well, about two or three years later, I got an email from that BM1, and he was thanking me for the decision that we had made that day. And attached to that email was also words of wisdoms and a charge sheet because he was making chief. Mm -hmm. So in the scope of things, standards do matter. And when we hold to the standards, it makes the Coast Guard better. It made him a better chief and made a better leader so that he'll be able to look back in his career and go, you know what, I'll be able to make that decision as well. So that was a kind of a defining, I'm happy to see that somebody was able to, from a mistake, be able to pull through that and still be a responsible leader. Well, I, I appreciate it. And that is really leading with courage. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's always easy to just give somebody a, a trophy that maybe they didn't earn in the first right. place. Uh, to have those standards, but at the end of the day, it's, it's taking the courage, uh, knowing that you know, you're not gonna be the most popular senior chief because mm -hmm. you're not recommending someone for advancement. Uh, that the day we start worrying about holding people accountable is probably the day that we are less of a leader. And so, you know, listening to that, what I hear is leading, leading with conviction, leading with courage, being an intrusive leader, and then it goes full circle. You know, an E6 who wasn't ready to cross the threshold to wear the anchors of a That's right. chief petty officer. And, uh, and I expect uh, that that BM1 now chief will be a better chief as a result as well. Absolutely. We'll pay that forward. Well, well, John, I want to thank you for being with us here this morning. Thank you, Evan. Uh, I know you probably have a barge you need to call <laughs> through, so you probably need to shift the uniforms sure. here pretty quick. With the but, on. but it's great to be here in Memphis and, and great to be with one of our true leaders in the Coast Guard, Chief Warner, Sir John Price. John, thank you again. Thank you, Admiral. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks.